When it's 2 a.m. and you need a taco and some curly fries, only one fast food clown has got your back. And it isn't the one you think. With a menu seemingly designed around late night cravings and late morning headaches, Jack in the Box has managed to hang with the big dogs at the drive through jungle despite some seriously tough breaks and a bona fide scandal. How did they survive being the most infamous restaurant in the country? Well, today we're finding out how Jack in the Box bounced back from tragedy. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel. After that, please leave a comment and let us know which chapters of fast food notoriety you would like to hear about next. Okay, let's see if you know Jack. If we gave you 1,000 guesses at the background of the guy who founded Jack in the Box, you still might not get it right. It wasn't a clown or a toy maker, or even a person named Jack. It was the work of a former World War II era naval intelligence officer. His name was Robert Oscar Peterson, and he was basically like Jack Ryan, if Jack Ryan fought Hitler and sold burgers. Jack Ryan in the box? Hmm, now there's a concept. In 1941, Peterson opened a classic drive-in diner, which he initially called Topsy's. He expanded quickly, eventually opening several locations under both that name and the name Oscars. One of the Oscars was located on El Cajon Boulevard in San Diego, California. And in 1951, in a moment that was presumably inspired by some divine fast food muse, Peterson converted it into the world's first jack-in-the-box. Actually, he was inspired by the decor at his other restaurants. Over time, they had developed a circus theme featuring a clown character. Clowns do have a habit of showing up when your back is turned. Also, the new franchise did, in a sense, have a box namely in Intercom. In fact, while Jack in the Box wasn't the first fast food restaurant with a drive-thru, it was the first major fast food drive-thru to have a two-way intercom for ordering, which sped service considerably. Despite all the clown stuff, Jack in the Box became popular. Peterson quickly got busy converting all of his other locations into Jack in the Boxes. And within just five years, there were over 180 locations. There is a good chance you've seen commercials for Jack in the Box. But if you've never actually seen one of the restaurants, that might be because the franchise is mostly confined to the Western and Southwestern United States, with some exceptions. Taco Bell has long been dogged by rumors that they serve substandard meat intended for use in pet food. The story has been so persistent, you'd think Taco Bell was owned by a pet food company like Ralston Purina. It's not, but Jack in the Box was from 1968 to 1985. The franchise's early success and fast-growing popularity convinced Purina to buy out Peterson, and they wound up owning all Jack in the Box locations. Purina continued to mold the franchise into a competitor for McDonald's and Burger King. And it was under their watch that Jack in the Box was able to break through into pop culture with a popular series of commercials starring child actor Rodney Allen Rippey. Rippey appeared in numerous television shows and made his uncredited big screen debut in the legendary Mel Brooks comedy, Blazing Saddles, playing the child version of the hero, Sheriff Bart. But he was most famous for a Jack in the Box commercial where he tries, and fails, to stuff a Jumbo Jack burger into his mouth, prompting his catchphrase, it's too big to eat. It's too big to eat. The chain continued to expand, eventually opening hundreds of new locations in new territories like the Midwest and the Northeast. But while the commercials were memorable, the public wasn't necessarily buying it, literally. There wasn't enough demand to support all the new locations in the new territories. So in 1980, shortly after opening the 1,000th Jack in the Box, the company announced it was closing 225 locations that were underperforming, most of them in the Eastern US. Having learned its lesson, which was apparently that people in the East absolutely hate them, the company decided to just stick to its territory from then on. Today, Jack in the Box has just a handful of locations on the entire East Coast. For the record, the Jack in the Box clown, who Time Magazine once characterized as one of the 10 creepiest corporate mascots in history, has a name, and it's Jack, obviously. Jack I Box, to be extremely precise. Also, he's dead. Or at least he was. He died in 1980, and the cause of death was corporate homicide. Allow us to explain. Looking to take the franchise in a new direction, Jack in the Box had decided it was time to part with its longtime mascot. 
to that end, they decided to do away with him in a new commercial that also pushed a snarky new tagline. The food is better at the box. Food is better at the box. To further distance themselves from their kid-friendly image. The commercial depicted a sweet old lady begging Jack in the Box employees not to blow up their mascot because of how cute he is. But once she tries the new menu, she turns bloodthirsty, commanding them to waste old Jack. They oblige her, detonating him into a zillion pieces as a joyous new jingle plays. It's pretty weird. So why did they do it? Well, Jack in the Box's humbling failure on the East Coast had taught the company that they couldn't compete with McDonald's when it came to families with young children. Don't feel bad, Jack. Nobody can. They decided that instead, they would target more affluent young urban professionals, then known as yuppies. And suddenly, a clown mascot just seemed wrong for so many reasons. Actor Dan Gilvezen would wind up filling the clown's shoes. Not literally, though. He starred in a series of ads comparing Jack in the Box's new premium upscale offerings to the junk food at McDonald's, and touting their new slogan, there's no comparison. Americans are not big on eating horse meat, or kangaroo meat for that matter, which is why there was quite a stir in the 1980s, when Jack in the Box was caught accidentally serving Americans burgers that contained horse and kangaroo meat, imported by an Australian company. The Department of Agriculture eventually stepped in and sorted it all out. But that was only after Americans had consumed most of the tainted burgers. Unfortunately, that would not be the last time Jack would run afoul of tainted meat. The worst was yet to come. In January of 1993, health department officials in the state of Washington started tracking an increase in cases of hemolytic uremic syndrome, or HUS, among children in the Seattle area. Unlike serving horse and kangaroo burgers, which may have been upsetting to some people but is generally harmless, HUS is very serious. It can cause some extremely unfun things like diarrhea, blood clots, and kidney failure. So an investigation was initiated. Surprisingly, it turned out that all the victims had eaten at Jack in the Box, where they had contracted the E. coli bacteria. More cases quickly started turning up in California, Idaho, and Nevada. Over 700 got seriously sick, and four children died. After the dust settled, it was learned that the meat had been contaminated by animal waste. To make matters worse, Jack in the Box had been warned by officials at multiple health departments that the refusal to cook meat to the government-recommended temperature of 155 degrees Fahrenheit was putting people at risk. For whatever reason, the box only cooked their meat to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and the results were tragic. Meanwhile, the effects on Jack in the Box's business were catastrophic. Sales plummeted by 35%, and hundreds of employees were laid off. It is difficult to convince diners to return to a restaurant that accidentally served horse burgers and negligently caused a fatal E. coli outbreak. But Jack in the Box managed to do it in the most unexpected way possible. They brought back Jack. The mascot made his comeback in a 1994 commercial in which he gets revenge on the executives who snuffed him out by blowing them up right back. That irony is so delicious, they should put it on the menu. Overall, the Jack's Back campaign was a big success, leading to no less than 18 consecutive quarters of growth for the company and putting the scandal back in the box. After that, Jack in the Box could do no wrong. In 1997, for example, they advertised their new Spicy Crispy Chicken Sandwich, with a campaign featuring a Spice Girls parody group called the Spicy Crispy Girls. Those spots were such a success that when it came time to promote their ultimate cheeseburger in 1999, they did so with the sync inspired boy band, the Meaty Cheesy Boys. Commercials riffing on the XFL Professional Football League, the 2000 Tom Hanks movie Castaway, and McGruff the Crime Dog, reimagined as Larry the Crime Donkey, were also big successes for the company in its irreverent new image. Today, Jack in the Box has somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,200 locations, making it one of the U.S.'s top fast food burger chains. They serve about 500 million customers a year, 90% of which still use the drive through And despite being chiefly associated with burgers, their most popular item is their tacos. Speaking of which, Jack in the Box might have the longest menu of any chain restaurant, although it may lose that title to the Cheesecake Factory at WrestleMania. They still have the Jumbo Jack Ultimate Cheeseburger, as well as the Buttery Jack and the Sourdough Jack. 
But then there are also bacon cheeseburgers, tacos, chicken nuggets, breakfast sandwiches, salads, and even egg rolls. From time to time, they also bust out a Philly cheesesteak, a ciabatta burger, a bacon and cheese ciabatta burger, and deli-style panitos. They even have seasonal items like Oreo mint shakes, pumpkin pie shakes, and eggnog shakes. Turns out, you could fit a whole lot into that box. In recent years, they've partnered up with the Los Angeles Dodgers with a promotion that gives free jumbo jacks to fans in certain areas of the city whenever Dodgers pitchers record 10 strikeouts or more. They also have a similar deal in place with the San Francisco 49ers. If the team scores two touchdowns, the next day a jumbo jack is free with purchase of a large drink. So enjoy, but watch out for vengeful clowns. So what do you think? Have you ever eaten at a Jack in the Box? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other weird history food videos.